Corporate bond, definition and how they're bought and sold. What is a corporate bond? A corporate bond is a type of debt security that is issued by a firm and sold to investors. The company gets the capital it needs, and in return the investor is paid a pre-established number of interest payments at either a fixed or variable interest rate. When the bond expires or reaches maturity, the payments cease and the original investment is returned. The backing for the bond is generally the ability of the company to repay, which depends on its prospects for future revenues and profitability. In some cases, the company's physical assets may be used as collateral assets. Key takeaways. A corporate bond is debt issued by a company in order for it to raise capital. An investor who buys a corporate bond is effectively lending money to the company in return for a series of interest payments. But these bonds may also actively trade on the secondary market. Corporate bonds are typically seen as somewhat riskier than U.S. government bonds, so they usually have higher interest rates to compensate for this additional risk. The highest quality and safest lower yielding. Bonds are commonly referred to as triple. A bonds, while the least creditworthy, are termed junk. Understanding corporate bonds. In the investment hierarchy, high quality corporate bonds are considered a relatively safe and conservative investment. Investors building balanced portfolios often add bonds in order to offset riskier investments, such as growth stocks. Over a lifetime, these investors tend to add more bonds and fewer risky investments in order to safeguard their accumulated capital. Retirees often invest a larger portion of their assets in bonds in order to establish a reliable income supplement. In general, corporate bonds are considered to have a higher risk than U.S. government bonds. As a result, interest rates are almost always higher on corporate bonds, even for companies with top-light credit quality. The difference between the yields on highly rated corporate bonds and U.S. Treasuries is called the credit spread. Corporate Bond Rating Before being issued to investors, bonds are reviewed for the creditworthiness of the issuer by one or more of three U.S. rating agencies, Standard Poor's Global Ratings, Moody's Investor Services, and Fitch Ratings. Each has its own ranking system, but the highest rated bonds are commonly referred to as triple, a rated bonds. The lowest rated corporate bonds are called high yield bonds due to their greater interest rate applied to compensate for their higher risk. These are also known as junk bonds. Bond ratings are vital to alerting investors to the quality and stability of the bond in question. These ratings consequently greatly influence interest rates, investment appetite, and bond pricing. How corporate bonds are sold. Corporate bonds are issued in blocks of $1,000 in face or par value. Almost all have a standard coupon payment structure. Typically, a corporate issuer will enlist the help of an investment bank to underwrite and market the bond offering to investors. The investor receives regular interest payments from the issuer until the bond matures. At that point, the investor reclaims the face value of the bond. The bonds may have a fixed interest rate or a rate that floats according to the movements of a particular economic indicator. Corporate bonds sometimes have call provisions to allow for early prepayment if prevailing interest rates change so dramatically that the company deems it can do better by issuing a new bond. Investors may also opt to sell bonds before they mature. If a bond is sold, the owner gets less than face value. The amount it is worth is determined primarily by the number of payments that still are due before the bond matures. Investors may also gain access to corporate bonds by investing in any number of bond focused mutual funds or ETFs. Why corporations sell bonds? Corporate bonds are a form of debt financing. They are a major source of capital for many businesses, along with equity, bank loans, and lines of credit. They often are issued to provide the ready cash for a particular project the company wants to undertake. Debt financing is sometimes preferable to issuing stock equity financing because it is typically cheaper for the borrowing firm and does not entail giving up any ownership stake or control in the company. Generally speaking, a company needs to have consistent earnings potential to be able to offer debt securities to the public at a favorable coupon rate. If a company's perceived credit quality is higher, it can ensue more debt at lower rates. When a corporation needs a very short-term capital boost, it may sell commercial paper, which is similar to a bond but typically matures in 270 days or less. The difference between corporate bonds and stocks? An investor who buys a corporate bond is lending money to the company. An investor who buys stock is buying an ownership share of the company. The value of a stock rises and falls, and the investor's stake rises or falls with it. 
The investor may make money by selling the stock when it reaches a higher price or by collecting dividends paid by the company or both. By investing in bonds, an investor is paid in interest rather than profits. The original investment can only be at risk if the company collapses. One important difference is that even a bankrupt company must pay its bondholders and other creditors first. Stock owners may be reimbursed for their losses only after all of those debts are paid in full. Companies may also issue convertible bonds, which are able to be turned into shares of the company if certain conditions are met. A balanced portfolio may contain some bonds to offset riskier investments. The percentage devoted to bonds may grow as the investor approaches retirement. Convertible bond, definition, example, and benefits. What is a convertible bond? A convertible bond is a fixed income corporate debt security that yields interest payments but can be converted into a predetermined number of common stock or equity shares. The conversion from the bond to stock can be done at certain times during the bond's life and is usually at the discretion of the bondholder. As a hybrid security, the price of a convertible bond is especially sensitive to changes in interest rates. The price of the underlying stock and the issuer's credit rating. Key takeaways. A convertible bond pays fixed. Income interest payments but can be converted into a predetermined number of common stock shares. The conversion from the bond to stock happens at specific times during the bond's life and is usually at the discretion of the bondholder. A convertible bond offers investors a type of hybrid security that has features of a bond, such as interest payments, while also having the option to own the underlying stock. 157. Convertible Bonds Understanding Convertible Bonds Convertible bonds are a flexible financing option for companies. A convertible bond offers investors a type of hybrid security, which has features of a bond such as interest payments while also providing the opportunity of owning the stock. This bond's conversion ratio determines how many shares of stock you can get from converting one bond. For example, a 5. 1 ratio means that one bond would convert to 5 shares of common stock. The conversion price is the price per share at which a convertible security, such as corporate bonds or preferred shares, can be converted into common stock. The conversion price is set when the conversion ratio is decided for a convertible security. The conversion price and ratio can be found in the bond indenture, in the case of convertible bonds, or in the security prospectus, in the case of convertible preferred shares. Varieties of convertible bonds a vanilla convertible bond provides the investor with the choice to hold the bond until maturity or convert it to stock. If the stock price has decreased since the bond's issue date, the investor can hold the bond until maturity and get paid the face value. If the stock price increases significantly, the investor can convert the bond to stock and either hold or sell the stock at their discretion. Ideally, an investor wants to convert the bond to stock when the gain from the stock sale exceeds the face value of the bond plus the total amount of remaining interest payments. Mandatory convertible bonds are required to be converted by the investor at a particular conversion ratio and price level. On the other hand, a reversible convertible bond gives the company the right to convert the bond to equity shares or keep the bond as a fixed income investment until maturity. If the bond is converted, it is done so at a preset price and conversion ratio. Benefits and Disadvantages of Convertible Bonds Issuing convertible bonds can help companies minimize negative investor sentiment that would surround equity issuance. Each time a company issues additional shares or equity, it adds to the number of shares outstanding and dilutes existing investor ownership. The company might issue convertible bonds to avoid negative sentiment. Bondholders can, then, convert into equity shares should the company perform well. Issuing convertible bonds can also help provide investors with some security in the event of default. A convertible bond protects investors' principal on the downside, but allows them to participate in the upside should the underlying company succeed. A startup company, for example, might have a project that requires a significant amount of capital, resulting in a loss in the near-term revenues. However, the project should lead the company to profitability in the future. Convertible bond investors can get back some of their principal upon failure of the company while they can also benefit from capital appreciation by converting the bonds into equity if the company is successful. Investors can enjoy the value. Added component built into convertible bonds, meaning they're essentially a bond with a stock option, particularly a call option. A call option is an agreement that gives the option buyer the right, not the obligation, to buy a stock, 
bond, or other instruments at a specified price within a specific period. However, convertible bonds tend to offer a lower coupon rate or rate of return in exchange for the value of the option to convert the bond into common stock. Companies benefit since they can issue debt at lower interest rates than with traditional bond offerings. However, not all companies offer convertible bonds. Also, most convertible bonds are considered to be riskier, more volatile than typical fixed income instrument. Pros. Investors receive fixed rate interest payments with the option to convert to stock and benefit from stock price appreciation. Investors get some default risk security since bondholders are paid before common stockholders. Companies benefit by raising capital without immediately diluting their shares. Companies may pay lower interest rates on their debt compared to using traditional bonds. Cons. Due to the option to convert the bond into common stock, they offer a lower coupon rate. Issuing companies with little or no earnings, like startups, create an additional risk for convertible bond investors. Share dilution happens if the bonds convert to stock shares, which may depress the share's price and EPS dynamics. Example of a convertible bond. As an example, let's say Exxon Mobil Corp. Exxon issued a convertible bond with a $1,000 face value that pays for interest. The bond has a maturity of 10 years and a convertible ratio of 100 shares for every convertible bond. If the bond is held until maturity, the investor will be paid $1,000 in principal plus $40 in interest for that year. However, the company's shares suddenly spike and are trading at $11 per share. As a result, the 100 shares of stock are worth $1,100. 100 shares x $11 share price, which exceeds the value of the bond. The investor can convert the bond into stock and receive 100 shares, which could be sold in the market for 1,100 shares, which could be sold in the market for $1,100 in total. Convertible bond arbitrage is a trading strategy that aims to capitalize on mispricing between a convertible bond and its underlying stock. High Yield Bond Definition Types and How to Invest High yield bonds are debt securities, also known as junk bonds that are issued by corporations. They can provide a higher yield than investment, grade bonds, but they are also riskier investments. What are high yield bonds? High yield bonds, also called junk bonds, are bonds that pay higher interest rates because they have lower credit ratings than investment. Grade bonds, high yield bonds, are more likely to default, so they pay a higher yield than investment. Grade bonds to compensate investors. 1. Issuers of high yield debt tend to be startup companies or capital-intensive firms with high debt ratios. However, some high-yield bonds are fallen angels, which are bonds that lost their good credit ratings. Key takeaways. High-yield bonds or junk bonds are corporate debt securities that pay higher interest rates than investment. Grade bonds. High-yield bonds tend to have lower credit ratings of below Bevy from Standard Poor's & Fitch or below Bathory from Moody's. Junk bonds are more likely to default and have higher price volatility. 1. 10. High yield bond. Understanding high yield bonds. A high yield bond or junk bond is a corporate bond that represents debt issued by a firm with the promise to pay interest and return the principal at maturity. Junk bonds are issued by companies with poorer credit quality. Bonds are characterized by their credit quality and fall into one of two bond categories, investment grade and non-investment grade. Non-investment grade bonds or high-yield bonds or high-yield bonds carry lower credit ratings from the leading credit agency. A bond is considered non-investment grade if it has a rating below BIA from Standard Poor's and Fitch, Poor's and Fitch, or Bayonne or below from Moody's. Bonds with ratings above these levels are considered investment grade. Credit ratings can be as low as D in default, and most bonds with C ratings or lower carry a high risk of default. Two. High yield bonds are typically broken down into two subcategories. Fallen Angels, a bond that has been downgraded by a major rating agency and is headed toward junk bond status because of the issuing company's poor credit quality. 3. Rising Stars, a bond with a rating that has increased because of the issuing company's improving credit quality. A rising star may still be a junk bond, but it's headed toward being investment quality. Advantages of High Yield Bonds Investors choose high-yield bonds for their potential for higher returns. High-yield bonds do provide higher yields than investment. Grade bonds if they do not default. 
Typically, the bonds with the highest risks also have the highest yields. Modern portfolio theory states that investors must be compensated for higher risk with higher expected returns. Disadvantages of high-yield bonds while high-yield bonds do offer the potential for more gains compared to investment-grade bonds, they also carry a number of risks like default risk, higher volatility, interest rate risk, and liquidity risk. Default risk. Default is itself the most significant risk for high-yield bond investors. The primary way of dealing with default risk is diversification, but that limits strategies and increases fees for investors. With investment-grade bonds, you can buy bonds issued by individual companies or governments and hold them directly. When you hold individual bonds, you can build bond ladders to reduce interest rate risk. Investors can often avoid the fees related to funds by holding individual bonds. However, the possibility of default makes individual bonds riskier than investing in bond funds. Small investors may want to avoid buying individual high-yield bonds directly because of high default risk. High Yield bond exchange, traded funds, ETHUs, and mutual funds are usually better choices for retail investors interested in this asset class because their diversity helps reduce risk. Higher volatility. Historically, high yield bond prices have been significantly more volatile than their investment grade counterparts. The volatility of the high yield bond market is similar to the volatility of the stock market, unlike the investment grade bond market, which has much lower volatility. Interest rate risk. All bonds face interest rate risk. This is the risk that market interest rates will rise and cause the price of a bond to decrease. The price of bonds move in the opposite direction of the price of market interest rates. The longer a bond's term, the higher the interest rate risk because there is more time for interest rates to change. 4. Liquidity risk. Liquid assets are ones that you can sell easily for cash. When bonds are traded frequently, they have higher liquidity. Liquidity risk is the risk that you won't be able to sell an asset at the time and for the price that reflects the true value of the bonds. High yield bonds generally have higher liquidity risk than investment, grade bonds, even high yield bond mutual funds and exchange, traded funds and exchange, traded fluidity risk. 4. Investment grade Vs, non-investment grade. You can typically classify bonds into investment grade and non-investment grade. Bonds are rated by three major ratings agencies, Moody's, Standard Poor's, and Fitch. When a bond is rated BEA 3 or higher by Moody's or Bevy, or higher by Standard Poor's or Fitch, it is considered investment grade. Bonds rated Bayonne or lower by Moody's or Bevy or lower by Standard Poor's or Fitch are considered non-investment grade. Two. You'll want to have a higher risk tolerance for investing in non-investment. Grade bonds. How to invest in high-yield bonds. You can invest in high-yield bonds in several ways. You can buy high-yield corporate bonds directly from broker, dealers. You can buy into a mutual fund or ETF that holds high-yield bonds. With the latter strategy, you buy shares of a fund that is managed by a fund manager who chooses which bonds to include. When researching your choices in high-yield bonds, you can read primary documents like the bond's prospectus, which provides information about the financial health of the company issuing the bond. It also includes the company's plans for using the proceeds of the bond, along with the bond terms and risks involved. The effect on high-yield bonds when interest rates rise. When interest rates rise, the market value of high-yield bonds can decline because investors can get higher returns with newer bonds. However, rising interest rates can also help high-yield bonds because interest rates tend to increase when the economy expands, so the corporations issuing the bonds can benefit from increased spending. This means that these bonds would have a lower risk of default. 5. What is a non-investment grade bond? A non-investment grade bond is a bond that pays higher yields, but also carries more risk and a lower credit rating than an investment grade bond. Non-investment grade bonds. Non-investment grade bonds are also called high yield bonds or junk bonds. Are B bonds investment grade? Bonds that have a BB rating from either Standard Poor's or Fitch are considered investment. Grade bonds. Although they are the lowest tires of investment, grade bonds. Non-investment grade bonds. Non-investment grade bonds are rated B. Moody's uses a different rating system. 2. The bottom line. 
Like with any investment, high-yield bonds have risks and rewards to consider. For investors with a high risk tolerance, high yield bonds may fit their investing goals. These bonds can offer more attractive yields, but they carry more risk and a lower credit rating than investment. Great bonds. Factor in your individual financial situation, including your income, net worth, investment goals, and risk tolerance when deciding whether high yield bonds are right for you. What is a junk bond? Definition, credit ratings, and examples. What is a junk bond? Junk bonds are bonds that carry a higher risk of default than most bonds issued by corporations and governments. A bond is a debt or promise to pay investors' interest payments, along with the return of invested principal in exchange for buying the bond. Junk bonds represent bonds issued by companies that are financially struggling and have a high risk of defaulting or not paying their interest payments or repaying the principal to investors. Junk bonds are also called high-yield bonds since the higher yield is needed to help offset any risk of default. Key takeaways. A junk bond is debt that has been given a low credit rating by a ratings agency below investment grade. As a result, these bonds are riskier since chances that the issuer will default or experience a credit event are high. Because of the higher risk, investors are compensated with higher interest rates, which is why junk bonds are also called high yield bonds. 119. Junk bond junk bonds explain. From a technical viewpoint, a high yield or junk bond is very similar to regular corporate bonds. Both represent debt issued by a firm with the promise to pay interest and to return the principal at maturity. Junk bonds differ because of their issuer's poorer credit quality. Bonds are fixed, income debt instruments that corporations and governments issue to investors to raise capital. When investors buy bonds, they're effectively loaning money to the issuer who promises to repay the money on a specific date called the maturity date. At maturity, the investor is repaid, the principal amount invested. Most bonds pay investors an annual interest rate during the life of the bond called a coupon rate. For example, a bond that has a fives annual coupon rate means that an investor who purchases the bond earns five A's per year. So a bond with a $1,000 face, or pair, Value will receive five value will receive five once one thousand dollars, which comes to fifty dollars each year until the bond matures. Higher risk equates to higher yield. A bond that has a high risk of the underlying company defaulting is called a junk bond. Companies that issue junk bonds are typically startups or companies that are struggling financially. Junk bonds carry risk since investors are unsure whether they'll be repaid their principal and earn regular interest payments. As a result, junk bonds pay a higher yield than their safer counterparts to help compensate investors for the added level of risk. Companies are willing to pay the high yield because they need to attract investors to fund their operations. Pros. Junk bonds return higher yields than most other fixed income debt securities. Junk bonds have the potential of significant price increases should the company's financial situation improve. Junk bonds serve as a risk indicator of when investors are willing to take on risk or avoid risk in the market. Cons junk bonds have a higher risk of default than most bonds with better credit ratings. Junk bond prices can exhibit volatility due to uncertainty surrounding the issuer's financial performance. Active junk bond markets can indicate an overbought market, meaning investors are too complacent with risk and may lead to market downturns. Junk bonds as a market indicator. Some investors buy junk bonds to profit from potential price increases as the financial security of the underlying company improves, and not necessarily for the return of interest income. Also, investors that predict bond prices to rise are betting there will be increased buying interest for high-yield bonds, even these lower-rated ones, due to a change in market risk sentiment. For example, if investors believe economic conditions are improving in the U.S. or abroad, they might purchase junk bonds of companies that will show improvement along with the economy. As a result, increased buying interest of junk bonds serves as a market risk indicator for some investors. If investors are buying junk bonds, market participants are willing to take on more risk due to a perceived improving economy. Conversely, if junk bonds are selling off with prices falling, it usually means that investors are more risk averse and are opting for more secure and stable investments. Although a surge in junk bond investing usually translates to increased optimism in the market, it could also point to too much optimism in the market. It's important to note that junk bonds have much larger price swings than bonds of higher quality.
Investors looking to purchase junk bonds can either buy the bonds individually through a broker or invest in a junk bond fund managed by a professional portfolio manager. Improving financials affect junk bonds. If the underlying company performs well financially, its bonds will have improved credit ratings and usually attract buying interest from investors. As a result, the bond's price rises as investors flood in, willing to pay for the financially viable issuer. Conversely, companies that are performing poorly will likely have low or lowered credit ratings. These falling opinions might cause buyers to back off. Companies with poor credit ratings typically offer high yields to attract investors and to compensate them for the added level of risk. The result is bonds issued by companies with positive credit ratings usually pay lower interest rates on their debt instruments as compared to companies with poor credit ratings. Many bond investors monitor the credit ratings of bonds, credit ratings, and junk bonds. Although junk bonds are considered risky investments, investors can monitor a bond's level of risk by reviewing the bond's credit rating. A credit rating is an assessment of the creditworthiness of an issuer and its outstanding debt in the form of bonds. The company's credit rating, and ultimately the bond's credit rating, impact the market price of a bond and its offering interest rate. Credit rating agencies measure the creditworthiness of all corporate and government bonds, giving investors insight into the risks involved in the debt securities. Credit rating agencies assign letter grades for their view of the issue. For example, Standard Poor's has a credit rating scale ranging from AIA, excellent, to lower ratings of C and D, any bond that carries a rating lower than BE is said to be of speculative grade or a junk bond. This should be a red flag to risk. Averse investors. The various letter grades from credit agencies represent the financial viability of the company and the likelihood that the contract terms of the bond terms will be honored. Investment grade. Bonds with a rating of investment. Grade come from corporations that have a high probability of paying the regular coupons and returning the principal to investors. For example, Standard Poor's ratings include <laughs> Excellent. Uh, very good. Uh, good. Bib. Adequate. Junk. Speculative. As mentioned earlier, once a bond's rating drops into the double B category, it falls into the junk bond territory. This area can be a scary place for investors who would be harmed by a total loss of their investment dollars in the case of a default. Some speculative ratings include Seeky, currently vulnerable to non-payment. C, highly vulnerable to non-payment. D, in default. Companies having bonds with these low credit ratings might have difficulty raising the capital needed to fund ongoing business operations. However, if a company manages to improve its financial performance and its bond's credit rating is upgraded, a substantial appreciation in the bond's price could happen. Conversely, if a company's financial situation deteriorates, the credit rating of the company and its bonds might be downgraded by credit rating agencies. It is crucial for investors in junk debt to fully investigate the underlying business and all financial documents available before buying it. Bond defaults. If a bond misses a principal and interest payment, the bond is considered to be in default. Default is the failure to repay a debt, including interest or principal on a loan or security. Junk bonds have a higher risk of default because of an uncertain revenue stream or a lack of sufficient collateral. The risk of bond defaults increases during economic downturns, making these bottom-level debts even riskier. Real-world example of a junk bond. Tesla Inc. Tesla issued a fixed-rate bond with a maturity date of March 1. 2021 and a fixed semi-annual coupon rate of 1.25. The debt received in SERP rating of B in 2014 when it was issued. In October 2020, SF upgraded its rating to BEP from B. This is still in junk bond rating territory. A BB rating from SUPI means the rating issue is less vulnerable to non-payment, but still faces major uncertainties or exposure to adverse business or exposure to adverse business or economic conditions. Also, the current price of the Tesla offering is $577 as of Oct. 2020, much higher than its 2014 $100 face value, which represents the extra yield that investors are getting above the coupon payment. In other words, despite the BBABE rating, the bond is trading at very large premium to its face value. This is because the bonds are convertible to equity. Thus, with shares of Tesla soaring 600 over the last 12 months ending Oct. 26, 2020. The bonds are proving to be valuable surrogates for the equity.